much for being with us this morning, and welcome to St. Paul's Mishawaka. The service this morning begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of the hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Glory, Glory to God in the highest. And, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God heaven King, King, Almighty God and Father, we, we worship you, we give, give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son of the Father, Lord, Lord God, Lord, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may, by you, be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the first book of Kings. At Horeb, the mountain of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I am the very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now, there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, the fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out, and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, and Nabal Mahola, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet, I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bound to bow to Baal, 
and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13. That's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 709. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he, he is speaking peace to his faithful people, and to those who turn their hearts, their hearts to him. him. Truly, Truly his, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, and that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy, Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth, truth shall spring up from the earth, and, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. From heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the letter of Paul in Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one who, of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by waves, was far off. The land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is, if it is you, command me to come out to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong winds, 
he became frightened. The beginning and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. morning, St. Paul's. The Gospel of Matthew, as we indicated last week, is about discipleship. If this is the case, what does Scripture teach us here about being a disciple and preparing ourselves in, for the kingdom of heaven? I would like to propose this this morning, that what this story in this Gospel teaches us is how to be the church in turbulent times. And a big part of being the church is the recognizing that Christ is still present with us, still present with the church, even amidst violence, persecution, and fear. We start this morning by noting a difference between Mark's account of this story and Matthew's account of this story, of Jesus walking on the water. One of the major difference, uh, differences between these two is that Matthew lacks the sort of eschatological urgency which is present in Mark. Matthew's emphasis here is the continued presence of Jesus within the church. This is not to say that Matthew doesn't have an urgency or a, um, a sense that Christ will come back um, one day, but what is emphasized in Matthew is more of the already of the uh, Christian understanding of God's saving act be already, not yet. In the, sense, in the sense that Jesus is still with us right now in the church. So there are two ways the tradition has approached this passage. Um, one is to see the boat as an analogy for the church. The church is battered by the waves of culture, persecution, and anxiety. When Jesus enters the boat, the storm stops. And in the same way, when Christ is at the center of our worship, we are able to navigate the, these turbulent waters with more success than we would be able to if Christ weren't at the center of our worship. The other way that the tradition has interpreted this passage is to see Peter as the church. Uh, Peter will be called the rock which the church is built on. The lesson here then may be that when we keep our eyes on Christ, things will go better than when we are looking to the waves. That when we take our eyes off of Christ, um, we will sink. But it is also Christ who reaches out to us and pulls us back to safety. In both the web interpretations, the church is called to be in turbulent waters and to be beaten and battered over and over again. Remember, it was Jesus who told the disciples, get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake. We are called into the lake, into the uncertainty. And shouldn't we expect this? Didn't Jesus say that we would be persecuted for his name? We are supposed to be uncomfortable, for at least the reason that we are not, to make, we are not made for this life, but made for the next. But before moving too quickly to, us, to the solution, I want to spend a little time with the problem which creates the turbulent waves. In many cases, we, the church, have been the causes, the causes of the waves which we now are asked to weather. The church has been worried about the ever-growing number of um, nuns today. And what I don't mean is nuns, those people who give themselves over to a life of prayer and celibacy, 
Rather, what I mean by nuns are those people that when it comes to fill out a document um, where it says uh, re religion, in the line they write nun, N-O-N-E. Many of us perhaps complain that we now live in a culture that puts in conflict science and religion. But we as a church have to remember that we set the conditions for modern science and skepticism way back in the medieval church. It was in the early modern period, science was widely considered to be a calling from God to study God's revelation through the book of nature. But in the coming years, it was Christians who explained away the need for God in our unscientific endeavors. Benjamin Jowett in the 19th century thought the Bible was losing touch with educated thought. Jowett argued that we should read the Bible not as sacred scripture, but like any other book, thus essentially desacralizing the Bible. We may further be concerned with our political cl climate and how this makes us, may make us feel uncomfortable. But I read a story this week about the slave trade in Africa in the 15th century, and the auctions have a clear overlap with liturgies of the time. People specifically, um, young African boys, were given as tithes to political leaders. leaders. And in the Americas, often the church created the conditions for our political climate and our political atmosphere when we didn't stand up against the racism, which has been part of our country's past from the very beginning. The church is not always the victim. Sometimes we are the aggressors. And we are now reaping what we have sowed from so many years of apathy and indifference towards the injustice that pervades the church's and our country's history. We are asked to weather these storms. <clears throat> but here is the good news. When Jesus enters the boat, the storm stops, and the disciples confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Son of God. We must point ourselves back to Christ as a way that we move on and correct the wrongs that we have done in the past. Like our Romans passage reminds us this morning, the price of salvation is nothing more than faith, in Christ as Lord, and that we will be raised from the dead. We are to cry out to Christ, confess Jesus as Lord. This is how we are saved. This is how we keep Christ at the center of our worship. This confession is an expression, expression sorry, of a deeper faith. As a church, we are asked to have faith when things are hard. Faith that Jesus is still with us. Faith that if we feel like we are drowning, he reaches out his hand and brings us back to the safety of the church and to himself. In our Old Testament passage this morning, we hear of Elijah's termination, his persecution. Of those who are faithful, Elijah's the last one left. The rest have been killed. In some ways, we are in a better place than even Elijah because in the midst of our tribulation, we get to see God through Jesus who is present with us now. Elijah experiences the wind, the earthquake, the fire, and the deafening silence. But we have an assurance that even this prophet did not receive. What we as a church learn about discipleship this morning is that we are called to turbulent waters. And that sometimes these waves these overwhelming waves are our own doing. We are still asked to have faith in Christ as we weather the storms and attempt to right the wrongs that we have done and to worship Christ. But it is through these waters that we learn how much we need Jesus. The comfort for us, though, is that Christ is still with us, even now. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in praying the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from God, made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our, for our sake, he was crucified and upon a child. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, dealer of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through prophets. We, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Prayers of People Form 5 found on page 389 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Douglas, our bishop, Edward and Francis, our former bishops, Lloyd, bishop of our companion diocese of Honduras, for Nate, Edward, and Paul, our clergy, for all bishops and other ministers, and for all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who do not yet believe, for those who have lost their faith, that they may receive the light of the gospel, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, especially Donald, our president, that they may serve justice promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live and work in this community, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a blessing upon all human labor, and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be free from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart, Show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being free from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Paul, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord our God. Pray together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, will be done on earth as it is, is in heaven. You give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses. As, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, our Father, who brought the martyr, Saint Teresa Benedict of the Cross, to know your crucified Son, and to imitate him even until death, grant through her intercession that the whole human race may acknowledge Christ as its Savior, and through him come to behold you for eternity, who lives and reigns with you in eternity, the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon the people in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death, as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us. Help us to eliminate our cruelty to these, our neighbors. Strengthen those who spend their lives establish, establishing equal protection of the law and equal opportunity for all. And grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the riches of this land through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most mighty and merciful God, Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure, and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leadeth to eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.